Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to recreate Narc's thumbnail. I'm going to be showing you how to go from this to this. The apps that you're going to need for this video is obviously Call of Duty Mobile and Pixar. Those are the only two apps you're going to need for this video. The first step is to select the skin that you're going to use for your thumbnail. You can also customize it however you like by adding charms and stickers, etc. Since I'm recreating an exact Narc's thumbnail, I'm going to use this skin. The next step is to choose your graphic settings. Usually in game, I play on medium graphics, but for thumbnails, I make sure to choose very high graphics so I can have the best results. This step is optional, as I know some people use low end devices, so you might not have the option for medium, high, or very high quality. So just choose whatever graphic settings is best for you. You also want to make sure that in your simple HUD, you've moved all of your buttons towards the left and you've made them all 10% opacity. This makes your thumbnail come out clearer as there are no buttons in the way. It doesn't mess up your main HUD, so there's nothing to worry about. Now it's time to choose the map you want to take your thumbnail on. For this example, I'm choosing RAID. If you have an alternate device with Call of Duty Mobile installed, you can jump into a private lobby with your second account, or you can jump into a public match. This makes it easier to take your thumbnail with less distractions. Once you're on the map, find a good spot to take your thumbnail and start screen recording. If you have an iOS device, before you start screen recording, turn on guided access. When you turn on guided access, it gets rid of the white line on the bottom of your screen, so your thumbnail comes out clearer, and you don't have to crop it later on in editing. Once again, this step is optional, but it just makes the whole editing process a lot easier and smoother. I tried to recreate the running animation in Narc's thumbnail, but because the Locust running animation has changed, I couldn't actually replicate the exact one, so I chose a different stance for my thumbnail. Once you've found the stance for your thumbnail, you can either jump into your editing app and screenshot there, or you can jump into your photos app and take a screenshot there. Once you've taken your screenshot, you can now start editing in Pixar. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the crosshairs. People are always asking me how to use the clone tool and in this video, I'm going to try my best to explain how to use it. Once you've selected the tool in the bottom left, you want to choose an area of the map that doesn't have the crosshair and try and clone that onto the area that has the crosshair. As you can see for the cloud, I put the white circle on an area of the cloud without the crosshair and then I use that to paint over the part that does have it. In the second example, I'm now trying to get rid of the ping in the top right corner. So you grab the tool again, select a part of the clouds that doesn't have any writing and then use that clone to brush over the part that does have it. I'm going to do it again for the aim button in the top right corner. Use a part of the sky that doesn't have it and then just use that to tap over it. That's essentially all you have to do. It's that simple. Another trick to help you with this is when you're trying to find the position of the map, use an area that's easily accessible like this one is. So in all areas where I want to remove writing or remove crosshairs, I've used a very simple background like the sky, the floor. It's very simple to use a clone tool for. But if you use surfaces that aren't usually the same color or like a flat smooth surface, it just makes it a lot harder to get rid of. It's still possible, but it's just a lot harder and you'll have to spend more time editing. The next step, as you can see here, is to crop the thumbnail to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and then find your perfect balance for your thumbnail. Usually it's just leaving a little bit of space between the gun and the top of the screen so that you can capture a lot of the gun and the background without it being too zoomed out. The next step here is to add saturation. You want the thumbnail to remain realistic so don't go overboard with the saturation. The default saturation is around 70 but I usually choose between 60 and 75. It all just depends on how I'm feeling. The next step is to add HDR. I usually only add around 10 or 15. This helps to make the thumbnail pop out a bit more and look a bit more high quality. Now we're adding motion blur. This part is pretty self-explanatory. You just add blur and remove it from the weapon itself. The way I do it is slightly different to everyone else. I firstly remove the blur from the weapon, then I increase the blur to 100 and then retrace anywhere where I've gone too far out into the background. This helps to have a more accurate motion blur and then your finished product, it makes your thumbnail look 10 times better. Doing it this way is a lot more time consuming, but it's definitely worth it if you have extra time. In the end, these thumbnails only really take me around 7 minutes, so it doesn't take that long. But if you want the process to be a little bit quicker, you can just do it rough and not pay as much attention to detail as I do. Once you're done, your thumbnail should look something like this. Now, you can just change the settings on your motion blur and your blur. For blur, I typically use around 2 to 3. And for motion blur, I typically use between 10 and 15. But for this exact thumbnail, I'm going to use a little bit extra. 
he uses around 40 because Nox likes to use a lot more motion blur in his thumbnails than I do. That's pretty much it. I know this video was a little bit long-winded, but I wanted to address a lot of the frequently asked questions I get when it comes to making thumbnails. So hopefully I've answered everybody's questions. If you still have any questions or you want to talk to me about anything, just hit me up on Discord or leave a message in the comments and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Thanks for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Call of Duty content. We're very close to 1000 subscribers and we're trying to hit that goal by the end of this year. It would be very appreciated if you could subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.